G'day, welcome to Pay It Forward. Today I'm excited to show you a new little pattern I've designed for you all and it is a little pin cushion. It's a little mannequin style. You can see she wears a little apron to hold all of your little bits and pieces and utensils. It's nice to make something for myself for a change. If you would like to make her along with me, simply click on the link in the description below. You can download your free pattern templates and then I'll show you how it's done. So here are the things you're going to need to make our little pin cushion today. We're going to need a front and a back body piece. And I'm just using a quilting cotton here in, a, in a, just a, a busy little print. And that is, has been interfaced with a, a medium weight fusible interfacing. You'll also need your base piece, which will go on the bottom here, which is a piece of interfaced felt just something that will coordinate. You'll also need your little apron pieces. And the first one is the, the backing of your apron. Now on this one, I've made it up in felt. And this time I've made it up in an interfaced, just an interfaced print, both will work. I actually cut the edges of this one with my pinking shears. So having the interfacing on the back just stops, stops some of that uh, fraying. Then you'll need your inside piece which is usually just a pretty print. And that one has a heat and bond on the back. And you'll just need a piece for your pocket, just a, something that is contrasting. And that one will just sit there. You'll also need a, a piece of cardboard or wooden disc. If you're lucky enough to have a wooden disc, I actually, because I make so many um, teddy bears and that sort of thing, these are actually joint discs. So I have one that is the right size which is a nice hardwood disc. Alternatively, you just need some really firm cardboard or mat board. This is used in picture framing. It's just a little scrap. My local framer gives me all these offcuts and I will cut both of those out using your template. I will cut two of them out and then I will glue them together. And that's something that you do perhaps a couple of hours before or even the day before and just glue those together so that they're really solid. And you'll find that mat board, once they're glued, it, you end up with the a strength that's very similar to these. So either way you want to do that. And you'll also need something to fill um, your, your little mannequin. Now the top part is going to be filled with just a standard polyester filling, but I like to add a little bit of something for the weight. So I'm just gonna add some a little bit of dry rice here. You can use, um, if you have uh, actual plastic pellets for toy fill, you can use those. Um, I find that rice works really well and it's still quite fine and all of your pins can still go through it. You'll also need um, a little bit of either a very fine ribbon for tying up your little apron um, or just like I've used here, a pearl thread, something that will match. And just the other thing I'll need is I'm going to show you a little technique to put on our little neck section using some masking tape Otherwise, just perhaps a, um, a marker, which is uh, heat uh, removable. Um, and then, so we'll move on. So the first step in making our little, let's move everything out of the way. Our first step is to choose our front piece. And we're going to be fusing with a hot iron and a protective cloth. We're going to, didn't show you the little neckline piece. That one just sits there and that one has fusible webbing too. First thing we're going to do is remove that backing paper and we're going to be fusing that one into place exactly along that line, that top edge there, so that we can sew that on. And we're going to be adding just a tiny little embellishment of a, uh, a little pearl bead I'm using there. You can use anything at all and something that coordinates well with your project. Um, and I will just be adding that same little bead um, to the little neckline there. So I'm just gonna press that one on. So there you can see I've pressed on my little piece and I have, I'm now going to make a measurement to pop in my little stitching line for my little necklace, my little pearl. So the way that I do that, of course you can use a, a heat erasable marker and mark that little V line in and stitch straight over it. I like to use a little piece of masking tape. Now you can see that I've just measured just straight up from the base there. It's probably only about a centimetre and a half from the base. It's up to you where you let that little, 
that necklace sit, you can have it up higher, like a more of a little choker. Um, I like mine just to sit here. So I've made, I've measured from side to side and found that center and I've just popped a pin in there. And you can see that I have just taken my masking tape and just laid it exactly where I want that line to be. And then I can do the same on the other side. Making sure that I'm getting it the same right next to that one there. And then I can take that one to the machine. Now I'm going to be using a thread that is um, just a little bit darker than my fabric. You can, you can make it quite gold if you like, or you can make it quite silver. And maybe you have a metallic thread that you can put through your machine and that would be very sweet. Um, and I'm just going to stitch exactly just on this side of that masking tape and then back up to here. And then when I pull that masking tape away, I've got a lovely perfect line. And also while I'm there, I'm going to just be stitching that lower edge of that little fabric piece there. You can see just to stitch that in place. And you can see I'm very close to the edge there. There you can see my little neckline is all sewn in. And I also have added my little bead and done my little stitching around the neck there. Next step is simply just to put the body front to body back and that is just right sides together. And we're going to use, I like to just use my little clip. Very important that all of these edges line up so we get a lovely smooth finish around all of those curves. Just a matter of clipping all the way around now we're going to stitch our little seam is just four millimeters and we're going to be sewing from the bottom here. We're going to leave this section open and we're going to sew all the way around, right around that top edge, right round down to the other side. And I do like to sew that seam twice and I will just clip my little, it's a very tiny seam, but I'm still going to use my pinking shears and just notch those, those little curves and then I will turn it through. Now before we stuff uh, this little mannequin, we're going to add a little drawstring thread which will pull in our little mannequin around the base. It's much easier to do it now before we start to add our filling. Um, because we're going to be using some, some rice or something like that, it is much easier than trying to do it afterwards. So we start at the back. I have my needle threaded with an extra strong thread. I'm using Gudeman top stitching thread. And this thread won't be seen, so it doesn't really matter the color. And we're just going to sew a, just about from about four millimeters in from the edge. We're going to sew a little running stitch right the way around the base. We don't need a knot in the end of our threads because we're going to leave those tail edges hanging because we're going to want to tie them off and we want a fair bit to hold on to. So make the threads quite long. So I'm just going to make my way right around, right around the whole edge, bottom edge of that little mannequin there. You can see there that I've gone right the way around and I now have my two drawstring threads there. So I just pull those out of the way. Our next step is just to start filling our little mannequin. Now I'm going to be using my forceps today which are great for filling these little areas. We start off with some small pieces. Use whichever tools you have for filling and we're just going to start and be filling out that very top neck piece there and we really want to pack it in. We want it to be quite firm. I like all of my projects to be packed quite firm just because they hold their shape better takes a little bit of time and make sure that as you're filling that you're filling out these little shoulders so we get that lovely shape and so it will continue to hold its shape over time. So I'm going to pack and fill that little body right up until just below the waist line here. So polyfilling to just below the waist and then I'm going to show you how we add some some rice or pellets, and then we finish off with a little bit more polyfill. Now that I have that top section filled, you can see that that's nice and firm. If you find that your filling is slipping, because it tends to want to come down and get to the widest part, 
You can see that I've packed to there and then I've just added three pins. They've gone straight the way through. So they're holding that, that filling just temporarily so that um, it, it's not all falling back on us because we really want this to stay nice and firm. So our next step is to just add some rice or whatever it is that you're going to be filling with. Now, this is just a matter of adding as much or as little as you need. Now you can, I must say, you can make these, these little mannequins without any weight. They will stand up beautifully because you've got your, your little wooden disc that gives you a flat base. I just find that if they have a little bit of weight, I can throw my pins in them, pull things out of them, then they're gonna to topple over. So it really does just make that little bit of difference. Now the amount you add is up to you. Perhaps just, I've got, I think I've got a little third of a cup measure here. So maybe just sort of three quarters of a cup in all. Sounds like a recipe, doesn't it? Add half a cup of rice. Um, but just enough, let's see how we're going there. And the whole time I'm going to be packing it down. You can be using your tools just to get that rice to settle in there. And once we've got a fair bit in there, it's got a bit of weight behind us, we're gonna be able to pull those pins out and keep packing it down and packing it down. Remember that our little apron is going over that section. But we need that area to be quite firm. So just keep adding. And we also need enough space at the top to add some more polyester fibre filling and then our little disc will sit on top. So I'm going to just keep on settling that rice down there. I'm going to pull out my little pins and let that all mesh together and you can find that you can really pack that in and get that whole section nice and smooth. And then I'm going to add just a little bit more polyester filling on top of that. But we're going to finish up our polyester filling just a little way from the bottom because our little edges are going to be pulled in over that little disc. So probably it's about three quarters of an inch, about uh, perhaps about two centimeters from the edge with your polyester filling. So my filling is really up to the top there, but it's still quite soft. You can see that I've pushed all that down. Um, the best way to fill these actually is I always hold them between my knees, put a little top end down, and then I can really pack it in there. I will spare you the, the visual of my little knees desperately gripping my little mannequin, but you get the idea. Um, another trick is to add is to use a little, it's a normal little wool felting needle, which if you've seen my videos before, you'll know I use this a lot, and that's marvelous for packing in your fibre fill. It takes just a few minutes just to really pack that in, and I will add a little more. Now, as we're doing that, you can be checking with your little disc that you still have room. Now, our pull-in is only going to be about the two centimetres. It's not going to go right to the centre. So you just need to leave yourself enough room that it will be able to pull in and tie around to make that base. Also remember that as we do that, we're going to make this quite tight. And so any of your little wrinkling here, if you have a look there, you'll see that that will pull up and it will be pulled around that base and it will all be quite snug and nice and smooth. So I'm just gonna add a little more filling, then I'm just gonna slip that little disc in on top. So there you can see that I've managed to push all of that filling down and I've slipped my little wooden disc in or your little cardboard disc and really, really compress that down. As, as hard as you can, you want to compress that down so all of, all of your filling is compressed down to here. And then I've just drawn up my little drawstrings around and tied off in a few knots there. And you can see that I've only had to draw it in so far. Depending on how much filling you have, you may have a, a larger space there or a smaller space there. It doesn't really matter. What matters is that you have it all nice and packed firm all the way down. So you can see there, because I have that little space there, we're going to be adding our little felt disc to finish off. 
but because there's a little space there and it will differ for everyone which is why I haven't given you a, a pattern template I just cut another piece of interfaced felt and I just glue that one in there first just so that everything's on the same level so I'm just using a clear craft glue just a, a fabric craft and hobby glue and it's fairly quick drying and it's really just going to fill up that little spot pop that one in there so I just want everything to be nice and flat and then we're going to add our craft glue just to the the interfacing side of our little disc going to be stitching this one into place with a little a blanket applique stitch which will catch it at the bottom edge and it really does give it a lovely finish it's the only part of the whole project where you do a little bit of hand sewing but it's definitely worth it make sure you don't have glue on fingers and it's just a matter of setting that disc nice and evenly over that base there check that it's all lined up press that one down and then we're going to just sand that one up I like to give it a roll around so that those edges are secure now you can see there that one's all nicely filled and you see if you have a little bit of wrinkling here which sometimes you can get it won't affect your project at all it's just a bit of a tricky shape to fill don't worry about that because our little apron is going to be going right over that section and you can see that will be all nicely covered so we can let that one dry for a few minutes and we can and get on with making our little apron so we're going to start with our apron base piece here and that has the interfacing on it and that's a basic uh, shape at the moment and then we're going to have our we've got our little inside which is really just our decor decorative section and that has our heat and bond uh, heat and bond on the back or fusible webbing we call it here in Australia and we're just going to fuse that one in place with our hot iron but we're going to have it extend just over one of the top edges so decide which edge is your top um, it, it's, it's the narrower end and we're going to have it extend just about a centimeter you see there that it's just about a centimeter the reason for that is we're going to incorporate our little ribbon or our little uh, pearl thread into that as we fold it over now when you take this to the iron to press it you're only going to you're going to stay away from this area and just press this bottom section on so that's nice and securely into place and then I'll show you how we do the rest but don't press this top edge at all because um, we're going to need to be able to attach our little ribbon my little centerpiece is pressed into place there and you can see that I haven't pressed that top area so now we flip it over and so here's how we're going to pop in our little I'm using the pearl thread I would rather use a very fine ribbon but I don't have any at the moment so we're going to use the little pearl thread which works just as well I just think a ribbon probably looks prettier just find your center mine is overly long I'd rather have more to play with and all I'm going to do is lay that pearl thread across that line there and then I'm going to take this all back to my ironing board and I'm going to press that top edge over and that heat and bond will give me a, a nice covered edge at the top of the apron you can see there and also capture that little thread or that little ribbon while I do it so we're just going to go back and press that one carefully into place I have my little apron piece now I've pressed that one over I've incorporated my little pearl thread and I've just sewn one row of stitching 
just about four millimeters from the edge just across that section there it gives us a nice little top line to the apron and next step is to take our little pocket piece and you can see I've just pressed eat the top and the bottom edges under just a bit again about four millimeters and I've just sewn a little top stitching hem across the top which will make the top of the pocket there now all we need to do is place that one on there just decide on your placement how far you want that to to sit up it'll depend perhaps on your print and your pattern I just like to show just a little bit of that color underneath of course you can really decorate this apron as much as you like um, you can add rickrack any kind of little braid you can embroider on it I just like to keep it quite plain because when she's got all of her little utensils and things she looks quite busy so um, but you could add a few little buttons and so on that would be very sweet so next step is simply to stitch across the base here just to set that pocket section in and then we're just going to stitch a top stitch down around that entire edge there you can see on this little one here all the way around and stitch that little bottom lining now all my stitching is done and I just need to mark out my little pockets you can see there on this one I've given her three little pockets now you can just have two you could have one down the center it's entirely up to you I'm just going to measure and I'll probably use my masking tape again to get a, a nice line but I'll, I'll make my measurements decide on how many pockets I want and then I will just stitch through all of those layers my little pockets are all sewn in you can see I've just given this one just a slightly wider pocket in the center so our last and final step is simply to finish off our little apron and the way that I do that is remembering to keep my little ribbon out of the way or my my cord whatever I'm using and I'm just going to trim that outside edge using my pinking shears if you don't have pinking shears you can just add a little braid you could just zigzag around the edge whatever you like just to finish that edge you could also trim it just a little bit smaller and then blanket stitch around the entire outside you can do as much um, hand sewing as you like on this little project to really sort of brighten it up I find this just quick and easy and it's simply a matter of coming from this corner and we're going to go out and we're just going to cut very carefully around that entire edge I'm going to make my way all the way around so there is my little edge all trimmed up you can see that I've just curved those edges slightly at the base and the next step is just to pop it on our little mannequin before we actually pop her apron on we have the option of sewing a blanket applique stitch around the base here just to seal that edge you don't have to if you've glued that well it will sit there it will be fine but I like to do that final little edging edging stitch so I'm just going to use a pearl thread here and I've got a knot in the end it's quite a long thread so that I don't run out halfway around you can see that I've just on one of my edges there I've just slipped my needle in there and come out on the edge there and I'm going to hide that knot in between those layers you see I can tuck that little knot in there and I'm just going to work my way around my little stitch is only going to be about probably about three to four millimeters so four, three to four millimeters down across and down and it's just a blanket applique stitch now if you haven't uh, worked this stitch before I do have a video that will show you and it really gives you great detail there but I'm going to show you here so I've just gone into the felt and I've come out just on the edge of that fabric just taking up a little bit of that fabric each time and I'm coming out through the loop and you can see that that has just pulled that one up I like to hold that there with my thumb my thread with my thumb so I'm going to make my way around the same distance it's like a little boxy little stitch this one so the same distance apart and, and depth so again into the felt 
and taking some of that, that fabric right on the edge there. And what that will do is it will cause that little, lovely little binding edge right the way around. Make sure that you rotate your, your little mannequin as you're doing so, so that your stitches are going straight out and not on a lean. You can see that that's going to give it a really nice, neat little edge. And of course, you can use a contrasting thread or depending on what your colours are in your project, you can imagine that all the different sorts of colour schemes you can do for these little, these little mannequins. So I'm going to work that little stitch right the way around the base. So there you see, my little base is all stitched nice into place. And it's such a lovely finish and it's definitely worth doing. And there we go, all done. They're both all kitted up, both ready for work. Aren't they such a fabulous little project? It's really been one of my favourites so far. I could get quite addicted to making these. Imagine these for craft markets. They would go so well, wouldn't they? And you can imagine all of the different colours. Of course, they don't have to be the pretty florals. They could be some quite bold, um, you know, black and geometric and even retro style. So I really hope you've enjoyed making them as much as I have. Well, that was fun. I really enjoyed sharing this little one with you. I hope you've enjoyed this video too. If you have, you could give me a thumbs up. That would be beaut. In the meantime, rem remember to subscribe because we've got more little patterns coming up. So many exciting things in store for you all. Remember, most of all, everybody, when something good comes your way, just pay it forward because we all can. And until next time, it's Uru from me.